Hi guys, right, so today we've got a bit of a special one. This is day one, practice day, the Tuesday, at the British Masters here at Hillside. Now, I have no actual plan of what we're doing today. I think what we're gonna do is get on the range, try and speak to a few pros, get on the course, and just try and show you a bit more of the European Tour event from like inside the ropes. Alright, so yeah, just walking up and down the range, trying to see what we can get with uh, with actual tour pros. And uh, oh Jesus, you bump into Christ. Good God, first How person that I'm speaking to today. You're the first feature on the vlog. Am I? Yeah. I feel very make, privileged. Feel special. Yeah. Feeling fresh this morning after YouTube opening yesterday. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Steady 29 points yesterday. Living 29. The dream. 29. I think I think I was about 29 as well. I didn't even check. Yeah, I didn't really check either. 29, 28. 20. Score, scoring one great, was it? It wasn't. It was a tough course. It was a tough day, but we raised a lot of money for these guys here. Yep. There. Oh, very nice. And that's all about, isn't it? That's the main thing, mate, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. What's, your, what's your plan today? Just take it all in. Keep living the dream. Keep that. Just just watch people hit yeah. the ball properly. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Try and uh, try and figure out how I can do it myself. <laughs> right, that's Simon Dyson there. I'm gonna try and have a little chat with him because he's got some interesting stuff going on. Personal training slash coaching for golfers. So I'm Simon Dyson. So Simon Dyson, for, you, for those of you who don't know, ex-European tour player, played in the Masters. Played Masters a couple of times, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I've seen your Instagram recently, and you're doing, uh, so you're doing some coaching and also mm. leaning into is it a bit of personal training as well, like the whole approach. Yes. Okay. So I've set up a company. It's called Elite Golf Performance. Uh -huh. Um, head over to the website and you kind of get to see the gist of it. Yeah. I'm like kind of tapping into all aspects of the game okay. from the fitness side of it, course management, mental side, short game, putting. Yeah. So you'll get I'll get one guy in one week who you know they don't know how to warm up correctly. So I'll give them a uh, the TPI screen, see where the weaknesses are, warm them up properly, take them out onto the range, and all of a sudden that's the big difference that you see. Yeah. They're hitting numbers they've not hit, and Absolutely. they get on the range and they literally feel like they could go and play straight away. Yeah. Because they've been warmed up correctly. Yeah. So I'm a personal trainer myself, um, and I'm also competed in long drive recently. So I know the uh, the importance of you know getting dynamically warmed up and all yeah. that. Yeah. So. As far as um, you know, the TPI screening. Is there any other like area that you've gone into um, in terms of like fitness, like certifications or anything? Yeah, to, uh, I went and did my uh, I went and did my NASM Level Four Golf Fitness National Academy of Sport and Medicine. Okay. Um, I just had a I had a few months free to go and um, study it. So I went and did it, and I really enjoyed it. And it's yeah. something that I'd like to progress as well. I'd like to go and do um, a couple more certified you know courses yeah, yeah. And, and really get into it because it's become such a huge part yeah. of the game now and you walk down this range and literally every single player will have some fitness program yeah. involved in their routine that's what i like about yours because obviously generally they have uh, a fitness guy uh, a coach but is your approach kind of trying to get the whole thing in one yeah like the fitness the uh, the golf coaching itself yeah just trying to make it yeah, exactly. So guys can come and spend the whole day with me. So they, yeah. then they can have, you know, it, it's it's totally up to what they want to do. But yeah. they can come. They can have a screen. They can have a warm up. Then we can go and do a proper like golf workout later on in the day. But or we can get out on the course yeah. and show them how to get around the golf course a little bit better. Yeah. Play to the strengths. Find the trapman numbers. See where they're good. See where they're not very good. And stay away from where they're not very good. And try and yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, try and right yeah, get in the right direction. We just walked across the first tee. Just saw me and my golf. Had a little chat with them. Always good to catch up. And now we're behind the first tee. This is it. it looks a bit tight down there. I'm fancy getting the driver out. It's the 18th and uh, the guys are having a practice round and we have one coming straight at us, two coming straight at us. <laughs> oh, good darts. So I have Renato here, um, who's a Callaway tour player. Renato. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello. Nice to meet you, Renato. You alright? Yeah. Firstly, Renato's caddy, hubby. Hello. 
Hello. Uh, so Renato is a European Tour winner. Yes. Is that correct? Yeah. Were you on the bag then? No. Oh. So I am not a so European Tour winner. So, <laughs> so how long have you been on the bag? Uh, this is my second year with him. Okay, excellent. Perfect. How's the season going so far? Uh, some up and downs, but you know, like, you know, like this is, this is a long season. And we, we still have many more tournaments to, to play. Exactly. That's what happens in golf, yeah. isn't it? Okay. Right, let's see. Why not I hit a few balls? You're playing for the camera. So, is there anything that you're working on in particular at the moment? Uh, no, yeah, just uh, working on my string, getting better from the beginning of the year. Yeah, yeah. so how has your season gone so far? Yeah, well, for the moment, uh, not really good, but uh, you know, the, the year is really long, so... It just, is, yeah. It's early, early doors, isn't it? Yeah, so just now, we came back with a good game and the score, uh, the rest, or we come. Yeah, absolutely. So, do you want to just talk me through what you've got in the bag as well? Yeah. Very briefly. So, what, what, what are you planning? Well, so sandwich, so yeah, 58. Yeah, let's start with wedges. Grind. Lovely. 54. Have you got the rusty? Yeah. The rusty finish? Yeah. yeah. I've got the uh, Apex MBs in the raw finish. Yeah. Have you seen those? They're beautiful. Yeah. Um, and, uh, 5450. Okay. Different grind. Yeah. Different type of. Uh, uh, different lies, yeah. different bounces. Then, yeah, uh, X Forge. X Forge, very nice. Yeah. With what have you got on those? Dynamic Gold. Okay. Yeah. That's not something you'd see in the shop, is it? Yeah. Some special yeah, shirts. Different on uh, the sandwich. Okay. A bit lighter. Yeah. And uh, from peach to the four iron. There's a the five iron. Then for I have 24 degrees. 24 degrees. Yes. Okay. Uh, bigger head. It's yeah. easier to More go forgiving. higher. More Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. And uh, also 18. Okay. Degrees. Like a wide. So that's the fairway finder, the low, the low yeah. bullet, yeah. Yeah. And uh, three wood, heavy flash. Okay. So do you change your setup week for week? So to yeah, this sometimes, week. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes, so this week, yeah. for instance, obviously it's quite dry and the yeah. ball's running. Do you... Sometimes less spin. Uh, you need uh, on the driver. Uh, yeah. Or maybe you put more draw, more fade. Depends, yeah. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> Beautiful. That's the one, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Good? <laughs> perfect. Right, thanks a lot for that, mate. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank Cheers. You. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks for that. Thank you. Appreciate thanks, the time. Thanks, yeah. Appreciate Cheers. your time. Thank you. Thanks. Right, so now it's chilling in the media hut. Got some nice food. Bosch. Bosch, personal trainer lifestyle. Um, right, so we're going to get a bit more um, stuff done here, hopefully. And then we're actually going to Formby, Formby Golf Club, to film with Golf Monthly. Now, as I've just explained, I'm just getting back into golf from long drive, a bit of a transition. Um, I actually competed in my first competitive round yesterday, which didn't go amazingly. So I've seen some of your tea time tips. Struggling with, at the moment, first tee nerves. And I think this translates to a lot of people playing yeah. golf, right? It really so does. So have you got a tea time tip yes. for first tee nerves? Yeah, have a great one for it. Of course it. you have, right off the top of the dome. <laughs> Let's go. Um, well, you know, the most important thing about first tee nerves is to not try and fight them. Which sounds like okay. a weird thing to say, but the reason we get in trouble with it is because we assume that first tee nerves means, oh, I feel bad, I'm gonna hit a bad shot. Yeah. Not true. Okay. Not true at all. Um, and actually, Jack Nichols used to say, if I didn't feel nerves on the first tee, that's when I'd be concerned. You'd be worried. Yeah, I'd be worried if I didn't feel them, because okay. what it really means is that you're ready and you're excited for what's ahead of you. So, yeah. to feel nervous is absolutely fine, because you will hit good shots yeah. feeling really nervous. You'll also hit bad shots, but you'll also feel a million dollars sometimes mm -hmm. and hit a terrible shot. Yeah. It just doesn't work like that. So, one of the best things to do is allow yourself to embrace feeling the nerves on the first tee. It just means you're ready. Take okay. a few deep breaths and a little thing to help you with actually how you're feeling on the tee. The first tee here is a great example at Hillside. Railway track down the There's left hand room, side. No, it grabs your attention. Always grabs my Don't attention whenever I come here. Um, focus on your breathing. So rather than yeah. trying to avoid thinking about something, which is nearly impossible to do, uh, think about something you want to. And okay. thinking about your breathing, counting your breath in for five as you breathe in and out for five. If you're thinking about that, yeah. it'll take your mind away from trying to 
avoid thinking about what you don't okay. want to do, which is hit it on the railway track. When you say thinking about breathing, do you try and inhale and exhale specific times during your, you know, walking towards the wall and swinging? Because yeah, I think people are saying like inhaling before. But... And then and hit on the exhale, yeah. yeah. Well, most people hold their breath when they hit, yeah. which is amazing. And you'll see it a lot, especially when they're nervous. They'll, they'll, and that causes and you see more the tension, shoulders, right? Yeah, the shoulders go up in their ears like this, they lose their neck, uh, and then the muscles don't work properly. Yeah. And we get tight and we make really sharp, aggressive movements. If you remember to breathe, which sounds so obvious, but so few of us do, actually yeah, go and yeah, try yeah. it next time Absolutely. you're out there. Absolutely. Remember to breathe. And my one I was like doing it, there's the science behind this to helping your your heartbeat coherently. It's, you don't okay. need to know about all that. Go into that be too you don't need to go here. into that. But the fact is if you count in for five, breathe in for five, and then as your breath turns over nice and smooth, the transition to breathing out, and then as you're counting the five, you get to number three. I like yep. to pull the trigger. Okay. And for me, it's something nice to focus on mentally, but also it does some really good stuff inside, which you don't need to know about, but does help. Okay. Thanks a lot, mate. Um, pleasure. Right, have My a good pleasure, week. Mate. Cheers, pal. Yeah, nice one. Cheers, but the interesting thing is, as you're walking up and down this range, is that every single player's got like someone or like a few people behind them, whether that be like their caddy or their coach. A lot of them have got their coaches here, like making the checks and, and going through things pre-tournament. It looks like a lot of them are actually trying to almost like make changes or, or get swing feels like instilled. And it's only like two days before tournament, so people saying, you know, you shouldn't have a lesson and then go on the course. But there's a lot to be said for, you know, having swing thoughts and almost trying to, you know, make the right changes and take that to the golf course. If you look at this one here, just try and have a look at this pre swing little routine that they're doing. <laughs> Yeah. Just got to the putting area. Um, the guys here are just getting warmed up to go out and have a practice round, just generally working on their strokes before the tournament, getting used to the speed of the greens, etc. But I think what is quite interesting is that how this differs from a typical golfer getting ready to go out for like a Saturday medal. I'm sure a lot of you at home will just like get to a putt and green, start whacking a few balls around with no real direction. But as you can see here, literally every pro that you're seeing has got some, some kind of like alignment thing going on. They're getting teased down and working on that like gate system. The eye line things where you've got like a mirror there and you're getting your eyes in the right place. There's not many, well there's no one here that's just literally turning up and just whacking balls around. They're all focusing on something in particular. So there's quite a lot to take away from that I think. It's the morning done at the British Masters. That was decent, got a few interviews. All really approachable players and it's kind of like a nice atmosphere because there's no one around really. It's not open to the public, it's just it's just media guys. So I think they're all pretty chilled out at this stage. I need to see Pedro, who I actually played with in the Challenge Tour Pro-Am last year. If you remember, it was the video like we shot, 21 under par, I think it was called. Pedro actually made it to European Tour and he's playing this week. So if I don't catch him when I come back later, definitely gonna catch up with him tomorrow and see how he's doing. But now we're going across to Formby Golf Club and I'm helping Neil increase his ball speed. So we're gonna go and do that now, get like a behind the scenes shot of that. Golf Club just met with Neil who does a video series for Golf Monthly he's kind of like their digital editor for their YouTube channel so the series of him is how he can get his ball speed to 175 miles an hour so we're gonna head to the range and you're gonna get a little like behind the scenes look on the stuff that I'm showing him and we're gonna start with like dynamic warm-up then we're gonna take to the course uh, and talk about a few things as well but it's just good to be back at this place because it's not bad is it that's the pro set up here Jesus Very sweet, yeah. Good job. Bell of a rig. All the gear, no idea. Right, so I'm here with now. Hello. Hello. Uh, so we just filmed our first bit of the day. How would you feel about that? Yeah, it was it was mad actually. Do you know what? I've never been taught how to get myself ready. How to prime yourself. Yeah. It, and yeah, you, you see tour players, you know, and you just sort of go through the bag, warm up, get up to what you think is full speed, yeah. and then you head to the first tee. That's what I do. I always just thought that's the right thing yeah. to do. I mean, that's what you see they're doing, but where the tour truck and the performance institute and the, the stuff they do before they get to the range, before they get to the that's range, that's the bit you don't see. Yeah. And basically, we just talk through some dynamic warm up and some like overspeed training, and definitely 
and looking quick already now. It's amazing how different it felt actually at the end of the session. It's like, wow, I'm really, you know, the club head's moving a lot faster now. Right, let's go to the course. <laughs> right, so now we're in the back of the Greenkeeper's truck heading to the ninth tee and uh, we're going to take it to the course. I'm going to show Neil what you can do on the golf course to maybe get a few extra yards and hopefully I don't get chucked out of this thing and die on the way. Formby's looking pretty nice again. We've actually, weirdly, we're starting on the sixth hole here at Formby. Yep. Um, somewhere I can really go for it with driver. Great hole. Um, yeah, let's get going. Let's put it into action. So as we were saying, we, you're not trying to make you know, an extra effort with this. You prime yourself, you're ready. You know, I was just making a normal golf swing and it's, it's going to be 350 down the fairway, mate. So. <laughs> I'm just getting the focus locked on you. Um, Okay, and I'm rolling. Okay. So James, you just said to me, uh, just before we got out, that a lot of players, they just use two clubs to warm up. Yeah. Like put two clubs together, swing, effectively swing a heavy club. It's definitely something I've done in the past. Yep. Uh, but it's not the right thing to do. It's something that you see all over. It's like the cliche warm up of a golf Is it? <laughs> One of them's the uh, getting a club and giving it some of this, <laughs> and the other is getting two clubs down and, and swinging them. And it's something you, you even see, if you Googled how to warm up for, for a golf, a golf swing, how to warm yeah. up. Golf, you see it, you get two clubs down, but it actually has a detrimental effect. Like with long drive, the moves you're trying to make without going into detail, um, I'm not gonna get around the golf course. No, no, okay, you're, well, you're just gonna hit it off the planet. You, you are, yeah. <laughs> so in long drive, you get eight balls, and you just gotta hit the fairway, or the, the grid once out of those eight, technically. Okay, well, you're trying to hit it more than that, but you're not, you're not gonna, most people, two three times and that's that's a fairly good sign. Yeah. Oh come on. <laughs> Look at that. It's actually out the car. That is ripped. That is way past that one. Okay. Right, James, okay. over to you. Here we go. So this is so what swing are you gonna put on this? Are you gonna put your long drive swing or are you gonna No put... I'm not. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Filming successful at Formby today with Golf Monthly. Um, I think that video is probably going to be up in the next few weeks, depending on when you see this one. So look out for that. Now the plan is to go back to the hotel and see the lanky one. I'm going to make you coffee because I'm just a nice friend. You asked me to put the kettle on. How would you like your coffee, James? Uh, black. Okay. Do you want me to? How many of these strips do you want? I mean, we have multiple choice. Uh, I'm presuming you would not like decaf. No, I need some uh, energy, mate. Do you? Just the uh, just the black one just, with just the one strip, or would you like the two? Just the one, I think, actually. This is actually double filtered with full flavour, so I'll just. I think we'll go for the two strips. Seen we as we have missed. Two strip? Did you miss? I missed missed some of the cup, James. So I'm just gonna. You you've missed. Some of the cup. Okay. I can just, uh, it's um, it's about the same size as a golf hole, so that makes sense. You hit the rim. Well, oh, that definitely went in. And just, and just the uh, well, just a one sugar, please. How would you like the water poured in? Would you uh, like it from from here at that angle? Which way would you like the liquid poured into this cup? Come on, James. Um, I don't know. My filter's going insane right now. Okay. Well. There we go. Look, I'm, I've got you again. I'll pour it in from a height of about six and a half inches, and that should just about spruce enough enough, spruce enough enough even, to get that flavour exiting the coffee granules just enough to. And the right tra trajectory. Just to stimulate those taste buds. But just hold it right there, and just, just, just pour. Pour it in the cup. Keep that sound going, keep it in your mind. Leave a bit at the top so I can put some cold water in there as well. Did you say you would like it black? Yes, black, please. Bit uh, of bit of bit of cold water in there as well, just to cool. uh, make sure that I can drink it in the next ten hours. Please. Now I didn't mistake in hearing you, you did say that you want a sugar, didn't you? Hmm. Would you like brown or white? 
Uh, white, please, now. That's fine. We've got a lot of both here, so... Well equipped here at the Vale House. Very well equipped. Thank you, Callaway. Thank you, and Travis Matthew, and Ojo. Shout out to y'all. Three and a half inches, the height of this is pouring. Yeah, that's a height that you're used to. Thank you. And we just uh, gently, so the spoon bounces off each side of the cup, giving that wonderful tickety boo noise. It's lovely. It's nice. We just And it wouldn't be complete without a little bit of cold water space there. Now we go into the fuck. We go into the bathroom, and I will pour you a little. Uh, no, 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 no. You like bottles, wouldn't you? Oh yes, yeah. so we've got some still bottled water right here, actually, ready. Now, is that? That's actually relatively... That's uh, sparkling there with the green label, I think you'll find there, sir. Okay, so if we feel the temperature, we can tell it's around, maybe a little bit lower than body temperature, which should give a really nice, full-bodied taste to this lovely Nescafe instant. Just go past the donuts now. This really is what you call an instantaneous coffee. Good dribble action on that stuff. So. Being careful not to spill any on my camera. I think that's done. There you go. So I'm just going to say this is the end of the vlog today. I hope you've enjoyed all of the scenes that have been going on at the British Masters and at Formby. Uh, we've got another day tomorrow which we're gonna get stuck in with. So I'm gonna leave you there and go for some food. But apparently we have to get back early because Harry Flower would rather spend his time in that bed.